Go, ladies and gentlemen, I'm MC Zim, and welcome back to Space Engineers Weekly Workshop Roundup number 14. As always, I'm bringing you three of the hot ships and three of the hot mods from the Space Engineers Steam Workshop page for the last week. And yeah, I'm sorry for being away so long, guys. It's just, you know, some personal stuff. Um, but yeah, I'm so sorry for being away so long. I know you guys love this series, and I do too. I love Space Engineers. And I just want to make more awesome videos for you guys, so you can expect more regular content going forward. I said that last time, but I'm sorry for not fulfilling that. I can't wait to get back in the man. Got a doozy of an episode for you guys here today. Um, as you can, uh, as you can probably tell by the link, it's absolutely huge. We got so much awesome stuff to cover. What a week to get back into the community. And, well, to kick things off, we have Geth by, uh, well, we have uh, the Geth mod by Talbone. As you can see, well, it's a, it's a Geth. It looks like the Mass Effect 1 model, uh, to be exact, uh, having been extracted and then put back into Space Engineers. And uh, it looks pretty good. It looks pretty decent. But, guys, it's a freaking Geth. It's not about the looks, it's the fact that you get to play Geth in Space Engineers. In Space Engineers. It's so cool. Yeah, I'm I'm all freaking over this. So as you can see, I paid my Geth black uh, because Legion. So, you know, why not? Because Legion is freaking awesome. And just looking at it, it's got some pretty decent little detail here. You can see the hand, uh, the three-fingered hand. And... Um, it's not like it's not like the most detailed sort of mesh or sort of mesh or uh, texture that we've seen, but it's pretty detailed. And let's get a close up of that neck there with those tubes and everything that plated neck. It looks pretty dang cool. And of course, the tubes probably powering the flashlight head, damn flashlight head. And then. Coming around the side here, we get a close-up of some of that armor. We can see exactly how closely that that sort of the sort of armor panels for the eyebrows and stuff fit. And then down here, well, uh, just a little bit of a close-up of the tube there. But so moving on pretty quickly, we have the we have S Warhammer 40k weapons DX11 by none other than Sec 10. And this is the bolter from the Warhammer 40,000 franchise, being uh, having been imported to Space Engineers. Um, once again, not really the most detailed mesh or texture, but it looks pretty cool. The bolter is a dang nice weapon. I'm not gonna lie about that. So uh, check this out. All right, uh, I got none over, none other than the legendary Konix Cobra, one of the best creators in the Space Engineers community, to come and uh, have a little bit of a deathmatch with me in my home world to test out the uh, to test out the weapon's strength to test out the, the bolter's capacity and yeah it's freaking deadly as you can see well I killed him in about two solid hits uh, with the bolter the bolter takes you down to about 20 health the first shot the first shot and then if you get hit again that's it you're done it's absolutely incredible. So after a while, we switched weapons. I got the uh, I got the assault rifle, and he got the bolter just to see. And yeah, it was the bolter that was causing all that. But now we move on to beta power transmitters by XPL Cython. Um, this mod adds two ways of transmitting power from one grid to another wirelessly. You can recharge your drones in your drone bay wirelessly. Power your uh, remote. Uh, research outposts through satellites or stop your near orbit station from dropping onto the plant with power supply from the ground nothing is impossible so it's got two actual uh power transmitters this is the radial power transmitter here the one that you just saw i believe is the optical power transmitter and then this uh, is the small optical signal well the one next to it is the small optical signal amplifier this one yes um so it does what it says on the tin basically um it just transfers power from one grid to another and we've got a pretty epic sort of showcase of that coming up uh yeah speaking of the meshes i really do kind of like the meshes i like well i, I particularly like the radial power transmitter because 
Yeah, well, it, it looks like it's hovering, but then you get down like you saw, you get down under it, and it's got like a pole sticking up. It's like, ha! Fooled all of you. I'm not actually hovering. I'm on a pole. <laughs> so, it, it looks it looks pretty cool from a, from a distance. And yeah, so this is the, um, like I said, the, uh, well, the amplifier. So as you can see, I've got this small, uh, small grid here, basically just a small uh, armor block on a landing gear. And I'm gonna place a battery on it. And I'll check this out, right? And you can see that there's no generator or anything on that. And yet, watch this, it's powering up. So what's happening is they're sending a power signal from them to the battery. So this is super cool. The, the implications for that are awesome. You can have all sorts of stuff happening. I approve. Uh, so yeah, that's pretty awesome. Moving on, however, to uh, the first ship that we have. This is the Monitor Class Heavy Corvette by Board Arsonist. And it's one of the smallest large ships uh, we've ever seen. And it's pretty, 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 pretty tiny, but it's hugely armed, like freaking well armed. You've got plenty of power for a, for a good, good broadside here with all these uh, missile launchers on the side and everything. Has virtually no reverse thrust though. That's, uh, that's an issue that we're gonna run into uh, later on down the line. But it's a pretty decent looking ship. I wouldn't venture to say that's one of the best looking ships we've had, but it looks pretty good. It definitely does look pretty good. Uh, especially for something that's made completely out of vanilla blocks. Yes, no mods on the ship, thank goodness. I freaking don't, don't really like blueprints and mods. I mean, when I make a ship, I make it with, with mods, but uh, that's just because I'm not imaginative enough. Uh, so yeah, and just the, I, I like this little detail here where these sort of uh, where the sort of outer fins overlap with the with the main with the main body there. It looks it looks pretty decent from the side, and uh, yeah, just going down the side here again. You can see exactly how small it is. Uh, this flat area here above the missile launcher is one block. Uh, so usually that would be. Uh, that would be a little bit more for a, for a large ship that we review on this show. So inside, this is literally the entire interior. You go to the left here, and there's a cryopod and some cargo containers, and that's it. That's your whole interior. And yeah, you can do that. You can get in the cryopod and go to sleep for a long time. Uh, the cockpit is actually a small fire cockpit. And you've got a programmable block here too, so just in case you need to program something. But, so yeah, let's uh, let's actually fly. As you can see, the acceleration is pretty decent. We're already up to about 20 meters a second because it's so light. It's barely a million kilograms, so very, very, very light ship. Uh, it's putting the Corvette in Corvette, basically. Corvettes, for, you, for those of you who don't know, are ships that are meant to be small and fast and nimble. And this is a Corvette, definitely. Well-armed, uh, well-armed Corvette, but small, presents a small target, and it's pretty quick. Realistically, it's pretty much all you need in Space Engineers, aside from, you know, med bay and oxygen system. Well, it does have an oxygen system, as you can see. But so, this is where I test out the drift, and, well, while it does have plenty of gyroscope, uh, speed, you know, rotatability, it does have a lot of drift. Uh, it's just, it's got three very small uh, sort of lateral thrusters on, on inertia dampener duty there, so not exactly the most nimble of ships, but it can, it can come about quite quickly. And so that's, that's an advantage in a combat situation. It can come about but if you need to like turn anything less than 180 degrees, it's just gonna keep drifting and drifting and drifting for a while. So I decided to try a planetary entry uh, with this, and I was to soon find out why you don't do this without hydrogen thrusters. <laughs> this is the first time I've tried to land a large ship on a planet 
in space engineers, period. Uh, inside, you know, inside a Space Engineers Weekly Workshop Roundup, you know, just on my own, whatever. This is the first time I've ever tried to do that. And as you can see, it went swimmingly if it's opposite day. If it's opposite day. Uh, so I've turned and I'm, I'm trying to get, trying desperately to get the thing to freaking counter thrust. And, you know, just using, try, you, trying to use the main seal to get the thing stopped so I can go up. But as you can see, it doesn't work. And we make acquaintance with a cliff face quite hard. Uh, quite hard. So that's not the fault of the ship. That was my fault. But regardless, we are down one, um, we are down one minor class heavy Corvette. And as you can see, that's all that's left of the ship is just this one blue armor block just sitting there. Um, I thought that was quite humorous. So what I did, well, I looked around a little bit, couldn't find anything uh, else of the ship. Yeah, I disapprove of that. I wholeheartedly disapprove and I kiss the, uh, I kiss the block twice. So I set up a little bit of a monument. Uh, here, here be the site of the first crash of the Space Engineers Weekly Workshop Roundup Season 2, RIP and Pepperoni Modern Class Heavy Corvette by Board Artisanist, your decent ship, at least in space. Yep, so that sucks. But, so, but we are moving on regardless to the D2 Warbringer Mark II by Tribal. Now this is a little bit of a ship, it's pretty huge. As you can see, it's got a gravity cannon that I wasn't able to get any decent shots of, but does work. It does actually work. And my guess is if it was, is if it was hit, to hit something, it would work quite well. Because the size of the missile is absolutely huge. Now, uh, I, just gotta, I just gotta show you this sort of side shot here. It's pretty freaking sweet. Like, it's really awesome. Uh, kind of... Uh, kind of a little bit of a, a space ball sort of thing going on here with this side shot. It's got plenty of side thrusts, as you can see. First of all, that's a big thing. It's got plenty of side thrusts. It's very maneuverable. Uh, right there, you see nine small thrusters. And then there are a couple uh, towards the back also that we don't get to see. And then uh, this one here. So plenty of side thrusts. Very, like I said, very, very maneuverable ship. Also extremely well armed. Uh, as you can see, well, I didn't think we were going to get to see those, but we do. And then the huge mainsail array back here. The huge mainsail array. <laughs> yeah, it's a bunch, uh, a bunch of large thrusters. Like, uh, I don't know, at least a dozen of them. So the way you get in is actually on the top of the ship near the back. And towards the right. If you're coming from the back towards the left, if you're uh, coming from the front. So you get the, this little hidden staircase here. And that leads down to this area. It has the, the airlock quite well hidden. So not exactly easy for boring parties to get through. So you press that button and come over here. Press this one that uh, pressurizes the airlock and closes the door and then opens this one. And then... Uh, of course, you have to actually activate that other door there. So, once we're inside the ship, we get this little corridor here that runs left to right. You already know what's up there. It's another airlock uh, for the right side of the ship. So, I don't really have to show you that. But, we are moving on into, well, into the, really the meat of the ship. This is, this is the sort of central ventilation area and you go up the stairs and then you bank and you turn and you twist and you do all that and you come up here and well the bulk of the ship is right up here in the uh, well this is the bridge uh, never mind uh, the bulk of the ship is actually under this the, this is the bridge and as you're going to see there are two uh, there are two sort of hidden sub bridges backup bridges whatever you want to call them so the main bridge is actually up top as you can see it was at the top of that staircase but these guys exist you know in case you want some some crew some other crew or if you uh, or if you choose to go with just two crew you can just sort of run back there so this is the main bridge it's nothing, nothing really spectacular but it does have a pretty decent view 
Um, in fact, a surprisingly decent view. It gives you a good sense of just how really big the ship is. It's, it's a pretty big, pretty big ship. And so coming over here, uh, just the two sort of flight seats here, and then you see the essential Gatling protecting everything. And then when you get up close, it turns it turns and aims at you. I thought that was pretty cute there. But so this is the bulk of the ship. This is the control room, and this is basically where everything branches off from. Um, so in the middle, you got the systems control room. But over here, I believe we're headed to the med bay right now, where my astronaut is getting uh, getting all fixed up and warmed up and everything like that. So yeah, this is this is the med bay. It's it's big enough. It's got all your oxygen systems. The med bay barely sort of fits in there. But, you know, it's all you need, really. And then, if you continue to either side, you get this neat little gyroscope room that I thought was pretty cool. Um, and you got a couple of these throughout the ship, actually. This is but one. I think there's four. But, yeah, so this is where all the gyroscopes are. And then, you continue forward past the sort of, past the sort of flight seats and everything, and you get to the main sort of walkway here. It looks absolutely gorgeous. And by the way, Ignore the fact that the lights are off. As you move your avatar, as you move your character through the, through the ship, the lights turn on and off behind you, which is a very a cool little cool little feature. But this is the miscellaneous room. Again, some more oxygen systems, some more oxygen vents. Just make sure everything's pressurized and everything, and the jump drive. And uh, then the reactor bay is right there. And so. This is actually, uh, this is actually, well, where everything sort of branches off from. As you can see, I had to move my astronaut into this room to get the lights to turn on. So that's why he's there. You got the central gravity generator up ahead. And then what you didn't see branching off is actually the engineering, I believe it's the engineering corridor. And just some air vents here just to, once again, Make sure everything's pressurized and oxygenated and that you don't suffocate to death, which is always nice on your starship because you really, it tends to sort of ruin the vibe of, uh, of um, exploring space, I think, suffocating to death. Uh, yeah, so this is the engineering corridor. You got a bunch of batteries here, an absolute ton of batteries, some more oxygen systems, just some sort of behind the scenes stuff. And then up here, I believe, uh, is, um, uh, up here, I believe, is some sort of uh, engineering stuff. I can't quite remember. But anyway, so yeah, going back the other way, down that corridor, uh, this time we're going to Gears' favorite place, the Gunner's Room. So, yep. Yeah, Gears would, would actually love this. It's far more spacious than in, this, in the Normandy. To, to make the understatement of the century and possibly the millennium and possibly existence. So you got these two rooms off to the side that you can't go into. I can't quite figure out why, but you just can't really go into them. And then the gunner, the actual little gunner's area is up there behind those doors. So flying it, it was actually surprisingly... Ple pleasant and awesome. Uh, this thing scoots. It really does absolutely go because of the huge mainsail array. I don't know. That's 816. Uh, I want to say it's 26 engines, 26 large thrusters, ladies and gentlemen. And by the way, once again, no mods. No mods on this thing. Uh, how these guys make these ships this epic with no mods? I have no clue. I have no clue. Uh, unfortunately, I wasn't able to test the weaponry on this one because well, it's all jumbled and automated and I couldn't, you know, there's no real way to get an accurate reading of exactly how powerful everything is, but it's a bunch of missile launchers and Gatlings, guys. It's a serious, it's got some serious broadside equipment, so it's going to suit you there too. It's got everything you need. It's survival ready, uh, as, you've, as you've seen already. And... Yeah, it looks serious. It, it what it reminds me of is to make yet another Mass Effect reference. It reminds me of Cerberus. The color scheme, the overall shape, reminds me of something that they might do. Um, I can't exactly uh, recall why. I think it's like the overall shape of uh, 
well, I wouldn't say purgatory, you know, where Jack is in Mass Effect 2. I don't know, but this, guys, this, is, this ship by far, by far takes the cake for the most <laughs> epic ship here. And that's saying quite a lot. This is the Encore by, the, the Encore gunship by Asinor. Now, before we get into it, 40,000 blocks, a lot of mods, it's its own world. So yeah, that's why, uh, that's why this is sort of running like absolute crap. Uh, you're going to get low FPS with this thing. And that's on a beast mode computer like mine. You're just going to get low FPS. So uh, sorry for the low frame rate. There's nothing I can really do about it. But it's worth it. It's really worth it. Like I'm all over the ship. Guys, I think this may be one of the best ships we've ever reviewed here. Objectively speaking, not counting the fact that Siri is the first and therefore the best. I think this may be the best ship we've ever had here. I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding. It looks freaking epic. And I just want to point this out, right? It doesn't look that big from the outside. Uh, that's my little avatar standing there. It doesn't look huge from the outside. It looks pretty dang big for a small ship, honestly. I mean, obviously, but... Guys, the inside of this thing is so huge. It's miles. It's freaking miles. I cannot express to you how amazing this ship is. In just every respect, every respect, I'm going to try to stop gushing for this but there's no guarantees quite honestly it's amazing so this is how you get in um you have to first press that button up there to open that gate and then you have to press the button down there below it to drop the ramp and then once the ramp comes down uh things start getting real real awesome look at the hangar bay we have had large ships on the show that have had smaller hangars than this. It's huge for a small ship. It's absolutely massive. And to, to close everything, you have to go over there and press, uh, press these buttons. Uh, you have to press the second one from the right to, uh, to close it. Yes, the second one, MCZ, the second one, you don't. So everything closes up nice and tight. And then you can explore the Encore in all its amazing freaking glory. Um, yeah, so this is, like I said, the hangar. And I just love the sheer amount of detail that Asimov managed to pack into every little crevice on this ship. Every little crevice is something. Every little crevice. I don't know what's behind those shutters. I quite frankly forgot to check, but... Yeah, it's, it's epic. So, you, you think we're going up there? Nah, 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 nah. We're going to this, we're going to this door. By the way, this door, if you notice, is all gray. That's because I had to run this thing in DX11 mode in order to get to run at anything above five frames a second. I mean, it's eight frames a second right now. It's not really much better, but it's playable for me. But so, I can't, for the life of me, begin to describe what... Uh, what this is. I think this is the electrical room because there's a breaker box on the right hand side and then a uh, sort of control panel on the left hand side. Uh, but moving forward, we have, I believe, well, this is the jump core. As you can see, it's got, uh, it's got jump drives uh, to the left and the right, quite a bunch of them, in fact. And then a uh, little console up there again with a breaker box. Presumably, you'd be able to, like, uh, like if you want to abort the jump suddenly, like if something wasn't working, you'd be able to open up the breaker box and then like pull a fuse or something, and then that would do, that would or uh, break a circuit, and then that would uh, that would stop it right then and there. So it's kind of like an emergency sort of thing. I'm not sure, but uh, two more control panels to either side there. Yeah, it's epic. It's got. Not one, not two, not three, but like 80, but, well, I think six jump drives. Yeah. But moving on to deck two, deck two in a small ship, guys. Deck two, and there's not even all of it. Deck two. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to stop. I'm trying to stop. I really am. But, so check this out. Moving up to deck two, we've got the engineering 
uh, well, the engineering sort of area down there uh, in that in that hatch, I can't really describe describe it. We've got reactor rooms to either side, all right? So, um, first of first of all, we're going to go into the engineering area. Tally would freak. You had another Mass Effect reference, MCZ. I see you saying in the comments, "Well, guys, what do I like? I like Mass Effect." All right, I need to I need to take a chill pill. I really do. I'm so hyper. This ship makes just makes me hyper, but. So this is basically Tally's domain. As you can see, just one little tiny control panel uh, and a gravity generator. And then back, back towards the end, well, we don't have much. We've got a little hallway that leads to a connector of some sort, uh, probably a cargo container. I wasn't quite able to see it, but uh, so this is where all the batteries are. And it's uh, just like with the with the D2 Warbringer, you have ready access to all your batteries and everything. So yeah, and these I believe are the reactor rooms. Um, creator, uh, ass hunter, correct me if I'm wrong. I believe these are the reactor rooms. As you can see, there are uh, well, there are two, technically two reactor rooms, but they span two decks. So you got one entry on the one entry on deck two and one entry on deck three uh, for each one and a ladder connecting the two uh, so you just move up there and you see well that's uh, it's connecting them so moving forward we've got all these uh, sort of pipes and stuff on the on the right hand side uh, I believe that may be oxygen and some uh, some other sort of systems there yeah and then Moving over to the drone bays. We've got drone bays in a small ship, guys. Yeah, drone bays. Just big enough for, you know, small like mine drone, small tiny little defense drone, whatever you need. You got two, one on either side, and then you got this connector, this refueling connector, uh, which you probably wouldn't need if you had the power transmitters. But so you got a method to open them. Uh, at the end there and then moving up to deck three this is where things get awesome this is where things get awesome the crew quarters are amazing for a small ship they're incredible here they are ladies and gentlemen massive crew quarters the biggest crew quarters, crew quarters i've seen on a small ship bar none just great crew quarters for anything pretty much great spacious you got a kitchen you got the you got the beds, you got the shower, you got the toilet, you got, you, you got a freaking plant, you got a freaking plant, you got two freaking plants actually, you got a little table there, fridge, oven, everything you need, everything you need, oven lights, yeah, these are the, these are the beds, and uh, the, there's a, there's a terminal, they're probably scheduling, you know, you could like set up an alarm or something uh, for your crew to get up and then they would like, get up log on to that terminal we'll say they're up and then all that so the beds uh dual bunk beds either side sleeps four um uh, so you have to sleep in shifts so not not really that great but you know uh, they have to sleep in ships on warships anyway sleep in ships on warships anyway so moving into the kitchen you got the huge fridge right there you got the lockers uh which are, well, I don't know what the lockers are doing in this case. Probably pantries or something. I don't know. Or just sort of equipment. You got the table there. Yeah, it's freaking awesome. You got, it, and you've got a medical terminal there uh, on the left-hand side as well. And then finally, well, uh, at the end of the crew quarters, I'm sorry I didn't show that, but at the end of the crew quarters, you got the cryo chamber. Once again, sleeps four, so you'd have to, working ships if you really wanted to crew everything uh, on this ship but yeah it's just a crew it's a it's a cryo chamber it's what it says on the tin like i said and then uh, an electrical box right there and then the shower one uh, with the lockers there on the left hand side the towels on the right hand side i just now noticed after having recorded everything yeah it's the same shower that everybody sort of uses uh was it the dead tech shower i can't i can't remember and then you've got the loo uh, that's missing a sink but 
you know, got a toilet, a roll of toilet paper, and you got a sink on the other side. I'm not sure if you saw that, but um, yeah, I'm sitting there and they're just enjoying a nice, well, number two. Sup, guys? I'm definitely enjoying this ship so far. I'm gonna look over here now and over there. So now, we're moving up kind of to the bridge here. And you see what I mean by kind of, because we got airlocks on either side. Um, but this is, this is sort of the general bridge area that we're moving up to. Yeah, and there's the bridge over here, over there. Don't worry, guys. We're going to get to that. It's freaking epic. It's freaking epic. Uh, it's, it's the best part of the ship, bar none. Got more lockers here. But yeah, so we're going to the airlock this time. Again, you got two airlocks. Basically, you have pretty much two of every room on the ship aside from the aside from the crew quarters, uh, which is why I'm only reviewing like half the rooms because literally the other half are just the same thing. Uh, so, yeah, it's and you're like, what more do you want? And then finally, the bridge. Guys, prepare yourselves. This is epic. This is awesome. This is incredible. This is incredible. Look at the bridge. Okay, first of all, I love how it's on two levels. I love how it's on two levels. You got the captain's seat right there, uh, top and middle, top and center. And then down here, you've got, well, uh, I presume one of them would be your gunnery sergeant and the other would be, uh, would be your navigator. So, you got two, uh, you got like I said, two seats here, two flight seats, and yeah, just look at all the buttons and everything they have. Quite cool. Uh, I really like the, those button panels, and just a sweeping shot to show you all the rain metery awesomeness that they have. Well, that the left one has anyway. The right one, um, well, I hadn't jumped into that, so I don't think I've turned on all the stuff. But I think it would have all this stuff if I'd actually meh, hopped into it and turned it on. I don't know. But all sorts of buttons and switches and nerdy goodness and everything like that. Uh, now, guys, um, uh, prepare yourself for this. All right. This is a screen capture moment. This is honestly one of the most beautiful moments in Space Engineers Weekly Workshop Roundup history. Look at this. Just look at this view. I'm going to shut up and just let you look at it. Absolutely freaking gorgeous. I just had to shot because words really don't do stuff like that justice. Just the way the lighting worked and everything. Really? Damn, ass hunter. Just damn, man. And guess what? It flies like a freaking beast, too. This is. We're already up to 100 meters a second, guys. This thing weighs 10 million kilograms and it's got some go. Like, it's got some go, and we already stopped. Like, we aren't, we, we just already stopped. It's, it's probably the fastest overall ship that we've tested. It's not a fighter. Yeah, and it's got plenty of armament, armament, like I said, like I keep saying with everything. But, uh, yeah, it's got enough armament, and it's extremely maneuverable. It's really extremely maneuverable, as we're about to see. So you got everything. You got everything you need to take down a bad guy and evade the guys that he sends after you. Now this is a sort of weird thing here. Um, if you want third person view, you have to press V and then sort of move the camera around until you get third, third person. There's something blocking the camera uh, uh, when, you're, when you try to use third person view that forces it back to first person. So, all right, check this out. First of all, the gyroscopes are freaking crazy on this thing, as you just saw. But now I'm heading back to the platform that comes in this world. It is a world, by the way. It's not, it's not a blueprint. It, it is a world. 
which is fortunate because there are about 11 billion mods that you have to download uh, that you would have to download if, the, if this was a blueprint fortunately not because it's a world all right check this out check this out you saw me uh, back in Space Engineers Leak Leak Workshop Roundup, I think it was number 10 taking that uh, taking a ship around an asteroid. Yeah, and I was surprised at how well it stuck to the asteroid. Guys, watch this. Just watch this. This is crazy talk. This is crazy. Look at this. Look how close it stays to the platform. And we're still doing over 40 meters a second. Look how close it stays to the platform. This is crazy talk. This is craziness. It flies. It handles so well. I'm all over this, guys. I'm all over this ship. This is incredible. Like, this is seriously... I'm... I'm just... I can barely contain my enthusiasm. Yeah. Man. Ass Hunter. Wow, dude. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely incredible. Uh, but yeah, it just, it's been, it's been incredible, an incredible video for me to make, guys. It's been one of the best, most fun to make. So if you like this video, God knows I do, especially in last ship, then go ahead and spit slap that like button. If you really, really liked it and you want to see more, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Hey, I've been MC Zinman, you've been awesome, and I'll see you guys in the next video. MCZ out. Damn, ass hunter. Damn, everyone, man. I mean, the mods are crazy. The chips are crazy. Everything is awesome. Mmm.